all right we're back on the ptr server i'm only going to test out uh, daji to determine whether she's going to be op or not we will have to see whether her uh, funeral rights will add the true damage portion on every hit or is it just one hit if it's every hit then i can safely say that she's one of the most busted as pve esper in the game even probably stronger than fusi uh if it's per hit let's take a look at lucas damage is he gonna proc three times or just once okay it's just once three thousand damage that's also not too bad uh next i'm gonna try out aoe and we'll see if aoe actually does Oh, you see, that's the funeral rites mechanic. My uh, Yuhime died, and then she instantly gets a turn. I want to see what happens if she dies again. Let's see. I'm going to cast the S3, and... Boom. Okay, it does proc on every hit, and then my Yuhime uh, dies. So, you can only revive once. The de increase in damage is very good. It's not as OP as Fushi that uh, procs on every hit. It only procs once per hit, so it kind of makes her balance a little bit. All right, another thing I want to show you is that in uh, Ritual Miracle, you will have a chance to miss rate on the boss if you're not using a type advantage unit, right? So for example, Kronos, if you're running a Inferno or a Wind Esper, then you those units will have a chance to miss rate on the boss. I think it's like 25% chance and I'm going to show you her debuff right here. Um, the puppet art has a minus, a miss rate minus 100% when taking hits. So my units should not miss on the boss. If I can land the debuff, the uh, Daji's debuff on the boss, my Unitron shouldn't miss anymore. Okay, we did land the, uh, we did land the debuff. Now let's put it at one time speed. Unitron has three hits on his S1. And the boss has this debuff that uh, minus 100% miss rate when taking hits. So, Unitron shouldn't miss right here. Yeah, he didn't miss on all three. Where if I were to not use um, Daji, my Unitron should be missing like 75% of the time. Uh, time. Uh, let's see. Let's test again. We'll see if that was a fluke or not. And she also shouldn't miss right here. She missed. Okay. Okay, that's a bit weird. Let's see. Does Yunchan miss this time? He missed on two out of three. Four, three out of four, okay. I don't know if this uh, debuff is working or not. It minus 100% uh, miss rate, but I'm still missing my hits. Yeah. For Kronos, when attacked by non-flow aspers increases their miss rate, maybe this one will override the minus 100% miss rate so i only have like a 25% chance to miss let's try um, against like other enemies we'll try against like normal enemies not in the original miracle okay let's take a look lucas has three hits okay this time around we did land all of the hits so i think the passive that the boss has overrides suji's um puppet art debuff so you can still miss on ritual miracle bosses but you can't miss on like normal enemies like this see my yuime also created uh this guy yep he crits and he doesn't miss against normal mobs this puppet art should work just fine but against ritual miracle bosses she will not work that uh that well because those will just overwrite this debuff you can still miss due to the uh ritual miracles uh boss passive so you don't want to bring her again uh, in Ritual Miracle unless it's just for the uh, damage taken. Okay, one more thing I want to try out is whether the miss rate debuff will overwrite her debuff or not. My debuff gives the enemy minus 100% miss rate uh, when taking hits, right? So if I were to do this on this one, my uh, Ethan should not miss on this skill right here. Let's see. Okay, it does miss. So, miss rate debuff will still override for whatever reason. My debuff gives the enemy 100% uh, miss rate when taking hits. But the miss rate debuff only gives you plus 50% miss rate. Um, but it somehow overrides it. So, again, it's not going to work on uh, Ritual Miracle bosses. 
or miss rate debuff. One more thing I want to show you is that in the shadow bosses, since they cannot be um, debuffed, her S3 will keep on resetting which means she will always have this S3 up and she's going to do an insane nuke every time that she moves. Um, I think this is going to be her coolest aspect because uh, if you take a look at the multipliers, she has 200% not that high but she has a 1 to 1 speed scaling. So if you have her at one, uh, 200 speed, which is pretty easy to get, just give her like speed boots and you can uh, easily get to 200 speed. She's going to have 400% multiplier with no cooldown. No cooldown. That is insane. Not just that, right? Her funeral right stacks gives her 5% damage per stack. And if you're not using up the stacks, she has 9 stacks for uh, the entire duration of the fight. Which means you have 400% multiplier that is also amplified by 45% damage. Which is what? Almost 600% multiplier on zero cooldown. Zero cooldown, okay? For now, in the game, we only have this uh, bosses that cannot be debuffed. Um, in the future, maybe we can get more uh, bosses that cannot be debuffed by, you know, Silver Rim or any type of debuffs. But for now, her main use of the S3 resetting is going to be in Shadow Bosses. Or in PvP, if the enemy has like, um, immunity debuff on them, then you can keep on spamming until you strip the buff, right? And also against Hide, she will always have the S3 up again if she starts spamming it on high. Now, I just casted the S3. Now, take a look at her ability 3. She has it up again. Again, this is like almost 600% multiplier. This uh, Daji is not built up at all. Again, there we go. S3. She's doing 22k damage. Not that much. Again, this Daji is um, completely horrendous when it comes to build. I think she has like HP, HP, speed or something. Start spamming the S3 again. 36k. Yeah, you get the, the, the point, right? And she's not only providing you with the damage, um, she's also providing with you with the speed lead, 35% speed lead, and her uh, debuff funeral rights adds true damage to all of your allies. This is be straight up better than Mateo, uh, but what Mateo has um, over her is that Mateo has AP gain. Mateo's uh, debuff only does 30% of his attack, whereas she gives you 15% of her attack and she has 9 stacks which means she's adding 120% uh, of uh, true damage portion and she doesn't need to crit so your allies your allies support will also reliably land this uh, damage whereas Mateo you need all of your units with 100% crit rate for uh, for you to maximize Mateo's debuff right and it also works against shadow bosses whereas Mateo will only works against uh, bosses that can be debuffed with the spark debuff, right? She's kind of busted for shadow bosses and yeah, that's it. I'm gonna do some further testing in my main account when I get her but she's looking very good uh, especially with the added damage that she adds to your entire team and also the mace rate debuff uh, is useful against like normal bombs and if you don't have any mace rate debuff on you the damage taken is gonna be useful for bosses her reset um, on her S3 is going to be very very good for uh, shadow bosses because she's going to be doing f like 400 plus uh, damage nuke every single turn that she takes which is also amplified by her free no right stacks she also provides you the 35% speed lead for PvE activities and yeah her damage portion that she adds to your entire team is also massive 15% true damage of her attack uh, and she has 9 stacks which means 100 and what 120 percent of her attack and if you take a look at mateo mateo has like uh i think like 30 percent of his attack or something the spark debuff yeah 30 percent of the attack won't miss won't land a critical hit and won't trigger uh an elemental boot so for mateo to get to her level of damage when it comes to the uh funeral right stacks mateo needs four hits from the allies to do 120 damage right whereas uh for her you only need one hit to get the maximum damage that you would get from Mateo's uh, true damage pass uh, passive. But what Mateo has is that he gains 5% AP, right? Um, that's what he has over uh, Daji. But again, Daji just provides way too much for the entire team and I think she's going to be very, very good for all PvE contents. Uh, Ritual Miracle, maybe not so much, maybe for APAP. And that's about it because, you know, the debuff doesn't work in uh, 
Ritual Miracle content. You can use her for Ritual Miracle just for the uh, added uh, damage that could be useful because it's kind of like a seer debuff in a way, but that's about it. I might not test the other units because this guy doesn't really need that much testing. He, We can already tell that he's not going to be that good for any other contents. Sleep doesn't work in PvE that well. Um, because if you attack an inter, uh, if you attack a unit that is slept, they will just get woken up. So unless you have like an R6 Hilda, then sleep is the worst kind of uh, incapacitation that you can get in PVE. But in Forbitter, it's uh, he's gonna be one of the best units that you can bring, right? And that's the only place that you can really, you know, uh, utilize him to to the fullest. So yeah, I'm not gonna be testing him out. The other four star. I'm only going to be testing her out when she gets to R6 in my main account because um, I think where she shines in the most is when it comes to speedrunning content and only when she's at R6. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Ciao.